So here we go with the third of our videos and the second about the types of delegated legislation. And this video is going to talk about statutory instruments, as you can see here. And um, I've got an image here of uh, Mr. Gove. Mr. Gove is currently our education minister. Now, I'm not putting Mr. Gove's picture there specifically because it's him. I'm putting it there as a reminder that statutory instruments are about the work that government ministers do. So statutory instruments are made by government ministers. And we're going to look at that process as we work through. But as ever, remember there are three main types. Orders in council. And orders in council are really used for emergency situations and certain change of power situations. We've got bylaws. And in this video, we're going to look at the statutory instrument. So the easiest way to start is just have a quick introduction. And the easiest thing to say about statutory instruments is that they are made by government departments. And I'm just using an example here. Mr. Gove is the education minister. And as the education minister, he will work for the Department of Education. So therefore, a statutory instrument that was to do with education would be delegated to Mr. Gove, the education minister, who would draft it using or through the Department for Education. Now, of course, as the education minister changed, then it would be a different person. But any um, education statutory instrument would be done by the education minister through the Department for Education. So the same is true of any other statutory instrument. If it was a statutory instrument on defence, it would be made by the Secretary of State for Defence through the Ministry of Defence. If it was an issue of um, the environment or farming, it would be made by the Minister for um, DEFRA, the Department of the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, through the, the well, through DEFRA, through the Department for um, Environment and Rural Affairs. So the idea is a statutory instrument is a law made by a government minister under the authority of the Enabling Act, so you still need the Enabling Act. Okay, so a law made by a government minister under the authority of the Enabling Act in an area of their responsibility. And it's drafted by the legal department. Okay, so each of these departments have a legal department working within them, and it will be the legal department that puts together the statutory instrument. Now, they're often used to update the law. And here I've got some money, and a good example of that would be to change fine levels for a criminal offence. So as society moves on and it is decided to increase or decrease a, um, the, the, the fine levels for a particular offence, and that might be because society might deem that offence to be one that's less criminal as society moves forward, or it might be one that society thinks that is more serious, and therefore we need to change the level of fine. Well, a statutory instrument is often the way in which that process is carried out. And sometimes those wider powers, much wider powers are given. So if you imagine, that's quite a simple statutory instrument. If you're going just to change the fine, the statutory instruments will be small and it will be a limited power. There may frequently be much wider powers, and that will be to fill in detail. Oh, I was quite proud about this. I had no idea there was a rapper called Detail, but apparently that's him. And um, they are frequently, statutory instruments are frequently used and given wider powers to fill in detail when it's much too complex to go into in the original act. So when the Enabling Act only contains the skeleton, Sometimes wider powers are given to the um, department to fill in the detail. And they're often referred to as regulations or orders. So very often you will see statutory instruments written as regulations or orders. Now I want to talk about one specific type of statutory instruments and that's the commencement order. 
And so the statutory instruments are often made in terms of commencement order. And if you watch the series of videos that I've done about legislation and being able to read legislation, I will talk about the commencement orders in, in reference to the, the Railways Act. So have a look at that and see how those two things link in. But a commencement order specifies when an act comes into force. So it specifies when an act comes into force. So there may be occasions when you don't want the act to come into force immediately. And the example I'm going to use um, is the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984. When that was passed, part of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act required the interviews by police officers of suspects needed to be taped, recorded. Now, the process, once that becomes law, for getting every police station equipped with soundproof interview rooms, with all of the right recording equipment, to conduct the training necessary for police officers, meant that although the act was, in, was enacted, there was a time period before it became able to be, um, to, to be enforced. So the commencement order would give the date that it would start to come into a, a being. There's another example here, and that's with the Railway Act. And as I said, if you go to um, the series on uh, um, how to read a piece of statute, I'll spend some time talking about the Railways Act, and I'll spend some time looking at commencement orders written under the Railway Act. And there may be several commencement orders made in the respect of the same Act. And that's very true of the Railways Act. So the uh, um, Enabling Act might different sections of the Enabling Act might be brought into um, being by the commencement order, the statutory instrument. A good example of this is the uh, Town and Country Planning Act 1971, and that had 75 commencement orders. So a commencement order is a statutory instrument that brings in a whole or a part of the Parent Act. Now sometimes there's no limit on the time and sometimes they never get brought in. So the Easter Act of 1928 has never been brought in. The idea under the Easter Act was to make sure that Easter fell on the same day every year. And that was a, a bright idea that happened in 1928 that never gained any momentum. And so therefore it's never been brought into power. So the last area to look at for statutory instruments is to say that they are often used to make sure that United Kingdom law complies with the European Union law. And an example of this, this is quite a long title, is the unfair terms in consumer contracts. So the unfair term in consumer contracts regulations, 1999. And that is created to comply with the unfair terms in Consumer Contracts Directive 1993. So, the unfair terms in Consumer Contracts Directive 1993 is a piece of European legislation. Now, even though we're a member of the EU, before that can become a part of British law, UK law, it has to become a law passed by our supreme lawmaking body. Parliament, in other words. Well, Parliament doesn't have time to enact every single piece of EU law, so it is enacted through a statutory instrument. And the statutory instrument in this case is the Unfair Terms in Consumer Contracts Regulations 1999. And that brings the Unfair Terms in Consumer Contracts Directive 1993 into UK law. So I hope that makes sort of sense. And finally, the last thing to look at is the idea about volume and enforcement. And there's a large volume of law made through the process of statutory instruments. And at present, it's above, so it's 
beyond 3,000 statutory instruments every year that are produced. So you can see that without the statutory instrument, there's no way that Parliament could introduce that amount of law. Now, statutory instruments are also enforced in the courts, and they are just as much a part of the law as any other enabling act or, or, or prime legislation, primary legislation. And some statutory instruments apply to the whole of the UK, and some apply to part of the UK. And that's it. It's as straightforward as that. Let's quickly have a very, very quick recap. They are made by government departments. There's an enabling act, and the enabling act allows the minister through his department or her department to create a statutory instrument. Now, the most simple statutory instruments might be used for something like updating the law, and the more complex might be used to add detail. They're known as regulations or orders, and frequently they take the form of a commencement order. They are often used to make sure that the United Kingdom law complies with EU law, there is a large body of legislation made in this way, and it is enforceable through the courts in the same way as any other act. And it can apply to the whole or part of the United Kingdom. And that's as straightforward as it is. In the next video, we will look at um, the last of our types of uh, delegated legislation, and that's the bylaw.